I'm not seeing what's so nice about it. Because you're gay. Yeah, it's kind of nice, looking at the stars with friends. I try to move my arms, but they've got me pinned down. There's no way I'd be able to move them. So I guess I'll just have to wait until they're willing to let go by themselves. Oh well, they've given me an excuse to daydream about space here. Let's have a look. What constellations can I see from here? What tales did my grandfather used to tell me about these constellations, too? There's too many to remember at once. Hey, you two. While we're here, want to hear about some more of the stories behind the constellations? That sounds great, Seji. Just like your grandfather used to tell us. Yeah, I'd love to hear it. It's not often that you get such a happy response from Ayumi. I guess they, found, they have fond memories of my grandfather, too. Well, I may not be able to tell him as well as he did. It doesn't matter. Just start talking, Seji. Both of them seem to relax as I begin to recall the tales that my grandfather told me so many years ago. I'm worried that they're going to get too comfortable, in fact. We're supposed to leave a while ago, but now they look like they're going to stay for the entire night. Come on, we can't lie here forever, you two. Why not? Let's stay here and watch the sunrise. But that's many hours away. I'm going to be a tired wreck by the time it's dawn. Can't we do that in the, from the hotel room? Well, we could, but wouldn't be as room... Quiet, Momoko! Ayumi backs that order loudly enough to make my eardrum rupture. Oh, right, right. Sorry, Ayumi. No, what were you going to say, Momoko? Nothing at all, silly. Man, it's getting way too late for this. With all my strength, I burst free from their grip. Okay, we seriously need to get back to the hotel room now. Both of them look pretty disappointed as they pick themselves up. Aw, fine then, Seji. It's not like I wanted to stargaze for longer or anything. You two go ahead if you want. I have to pack up this telescope. Here, I'll give you the key. You're gonna tell two girls like us to go home by ourselves? What if something happens and you're not there? She makes a good point, Seji. Don't leave us alone. I honestly think that if anyone was stupid enough to attack these two, it would end up with a trip to the hospital for them. I guess I'm walking with them. Alright, but I still have to pack this up. You don't mind waiting, do you? Not at all. I guess I can do you a favor and wait for you just this once. Alright, thank you. As I turn back my back to them, I can hear them whispering to each other. What are they talking about? I don't know. You know, I think I understand you a little bit better now, Seji. Even though it's not my thing, I can see why you love it so much. I agree with Momoko. Sometimes, I don't know what's going on in that hollow head of yours. Now that I've had a closer look, I think I'll get it a little bit more. After I pack up, we walk back to the hotel along the beach, watching the moon shimmer over the ocean. I think it's moments like these that you really remember. The room is silent apart from the sound of the clock. I turn on the television, but I actually hate television. So all I can do is hope that these two are going to wake up soon. My hope continues to fade with every passing minute though. If I think about it logically, Every minute that passes by is another minute which brings me closer to my goal. Finally, the door to their bedroom opens. Is that idiot still... Oh, good morning, Seji. Good morning, Ayumi. Don't forget about me, Seji. Good morning to you too, Momoko. Why didn't you say you were awake already? I didn't want to disturb you. I just remember me knocking on your door, and everything after that is fuzzy. But I still think I shouldn't do it. What? You didn't think to knock on the door and say something? It's not as if you have to barge into our room or anything. I tried knocking last time and look what happened. It's moot anyway. It's time for the beach. We have all kinds of things planned for today. What kinds of things exactly? Oh, you'll find out eventually, Seji. Won't he, Ayumi? Her face just turns red in response. 
<laughs> like, girls are really like this. This is hilarious. I believe that was a yes. Stop standing there, silly. It's time to go. I can't offer any resistance as she begins to push me towards the door. Alright, alright. You don't have to push me. Momoko dragged me to the shack. She's pouting like she does when she wants me to do something for her. I feel like ice cream. This early in the morning? Of course. The fact that it's forbidding makes it all the better. You should really eat something proper before you have ice cream. You're so mean, silly. I want my ice cream. She begins to ball right on the spot. Seji! Give me my ice cream! Don't you want to make me happy? I, um... She's making me feel really guilty. Ayumi doesn't seem to care at all, though. You should act more dignified than that, Momoko. I know these are crocodile tears. Oh no, you've got me. Momoko just starts laughing diabolically. I should have known. But anyway, silly, can we have ice cream? Can we? I don't see why not. Yay, Ayumi, you get one too. A shiver of dread goes down my spine as I hand the popsicles over to them. Seji, are you okay? You're looking a bit pale. I turn my back to them and shake off the feeling of dread. Don't worry about me. It's fine. I just felt like someone stepped on my... <laughs> As I turn back, something in my brain starts to comprehend what I'm seeing. <laughs> Both of them are already eating their ice cream, but... Something about it just doesn't seem right to me. Sorry, Seji. Were you saying something? Oh no, I wasn't saying anything. I can feel my mind go blank as they continue to suck on those popsicles. <laughs> Should I say something? Is something the matter, Seji? <laughs> yeah, she's the strong big bully. Hi, Misty. She pulls the popsicle out of her mouth, letting it melt letting its melting shaft drip down her hands. <laughs> Long, sticky strands of it begin to drip onto her chest. Seji, this is so dirty, but I like it. She looks down at her chest and tries to wipe the goo away, only for it to stick to her fingers. It's getting everywhere, Seji. So dirty. How could you stand there watching as I do whatever I like to you, your ice cream? Um, I... <laughs> She runs her tongue up and down the shafts, sometimes letting it wrap around slowly. You're standing there like a fool. Stop looking so undignified. All we're doing is eating ice cream after all. But... but... But what? What are you thinking of? What twisted image has your imagination created now? She shoves the entire thing in her mouth, then slowly draws it out. Small globs of melted ice cream sticking to her lips. Knowing you, you're probably imagining something else. I can just tell. I'm not. I'm not thinking about anything like that, I swear. Just finish your ice cream as quickly as you can, okay? But Seji, it's much more fun to take your time with. It lets you savor every little bit. I'm not going to let a single drop get away from me. She begins licking her fingers clean then. Oh my, I've gotten myself dirty too. I better start cleaning that off. Ayumi follows Momoko's lead, her tongue darting between the gaps in her fingers. I really like this ice cream though. It would be a shame to waste any of it, just like Momoko said. I feel like I'm going to faint. This is so embarrassing to watch. Oh my, Seji, you look really pale. I think we need to get your heart rate higher. No thank you. Please enjoy your ice cream. No! More time passes. <laughs> Having gotten away from the shack, I brought them to the park. I managed to stock up on snacks before we left. Hey, you two. Why don't we eat before we head back to the water today? Momoko seems delighted at the idea. Yay, we're finally having a picnic! 
We're having chips and cookies for a picnic? Couldn't we have gotten anything better than that? We should make some things... Wait. We should make something next time we go to the park. In fact, I heard that Aomi is a fantastic cook. Well, I guess I could let this fool sample some of my cooking. It's okay. No one has to cook anything for me. You don't have a very good diet, Seji. You need to eat something proper. Why don't we get ingredients on the way home and make a really nice dinner? That sounds great, actually. I'll make sure to cook some... No, no! Let us do the cooking. Surely I can make my friends something as... Really? Don't worry about it, Seji. Just let us do the work this time. Funny. When I cooked for all them at home, they couldn't say no. We want to make you happy for a change, Seji. You always do so much for us, and we want to return the favor. I don't really do that much, do I? Of course you do, idiot! He's just being humble, Ayumi. All I do is cook for them sometimes, and maybe help them out with housework. It's nothing really that special, is it? Either way, just you wait and see, Seji. We'll cook you something so wonderful that you'll be begging me for more. I'll make it so good that you won't be able to live without it. Well, I hope it'll taste as good as you say it will. Of course it will, idiot! Baka! I'm only gonna let you taste it just this once. <laughs> I just wanted to cook some. I just wanted to cook something today. It's not like I'm doing it for you or anything, so don't get the wrong idea. I'll make you something amazing too, Seji. You'll eat like a king tonight. Well, I look forward to it then. Why don't we buy the ingredients and let's go home first? I think he'd enjoy a surprise. Great idea, Ayumi. We'll get all sorts of nice things. Now I'm just plain worried. When was the last time I saw Momoko like this? I wouldn't dare say no to her, though. My best hope is with Ayumi. She's actually quite a good chef. Maybe she'll guide Momoko away from disaster. You remember what happened last time, right, Momoko? Yeah, but I think I've gotten a lot better at cooking since then. It'll be fine, Ayumi. No, you aren't buying anything I don't tell you to buy. But Ayumi, I'm... No, that's final. It's like I'm watching Momoko get scolded by her mother. In response, she pouts and grumpily turns away. Fine, then. Thank you, Ayumi. I don't think I'd like to spend the rest of this holiday in the hospital. Anyway, even though I couldn't cook anything, let's enjoy what we have as best as we can. I reach into my bag and hold out a peace offering. Momoko brightens up immediately. I'm keen. You got my favorite flavor, Seji. Oh, mine too. Both of them happily tear open the packets of junk food and shovel it by the handful into their mouths. If there's anything I learned about them both, it's that they have massive appetites. I don't bother reaching for any of the chips myself. I already knew that I wasn't going to get anything to eat the, the minute that I came up with this idea. Both of them have completely devoured everything I brought. That was great! All I need is a nice swim to work it off now. Now that's an idea I can agree with. Though the swimming part might be a bit harder for me. Don't worry, Ayumi. We'll have more swimming lessons today. There will be time for everything. That'll be nice, Seji. Anyway, let's get going. Why waste all this time sitting around talking? Good point. We've already eaten. Well, they've already eaten, anyway. I'll race you both there. There's no way that I'm going to lose to you, Seji. I'm not participating in any race. Tell you what, Ayumi. Whoever th wins this race gets to... She leans over and whispers something in Ayumi's ear. Gets to what? Ki 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 Now now, don't tell Seji about it. That will spoil the surprise. This surprise. I'm not sure if I want to discover what it is. He's gay. I'm telling you, he's gay. He's gotta be gay. Come on, Ayumi. Aren't you gonna have you aren't gonna have any fun if you stay on the sand. Despite her hesitation, Ayumi stumbles into the ocean.